If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video, reread the problem before listening on. The problem says that the tides cause the ocean surface to rise and fall a distance d from the highest level to the lowest level. So we've sketched a graph showing the motion of this tide, and from the highest level of the tide to the lowest level, the water falls a distance d. And by sketching this graph, we should be able to see what the amplitude of the tide will be. Let's recall that the amplitude is represented by this symbol here, x sub m. So you want to ask yourself, what is the amplitude of this if the distance from high to low is represented by d? Well, hopefully we can see that the amplitude, which is measured relative to this horizontal axis right here, would simply be half of that distance d. So we're going to label that d divided by 2, and what we've just stated is that the amplitude x sub m is going to equal d divided by 2. In addition, we have sketched this cosine curve to begin at its standard position, meaning that it's not shifted, meaning that this curve right here isn't shifted to the right or to the left. So for example, we don't have the graph sketched in that orientation there. So when it's beginning at its standard orientation, that means that this phase angle here would equal zero. So that's going to allow us to rewrite the displacement equation by subbing in d divided by 2 for xm and 0 for that phase angle. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, in addition, we know that omega, this angular frequency, can be substituted with the expression 2 pi divided by the period. And we're going to want to do that because the question gives us the period of the motion of the water. So let's make that substitution next. Now we can simplify the equation a little bit here because we have this plus zero, so we can knock that out of the equation. And then we want to go back and reread the problem, get a sense of what the question's asking us to do. It says, how long does it take for the water to fall a distance of 0.25d from its highest level? Now let's recall that at the highest level, the position is d divided by two. So let's clean up our workspace here. We're going to take that highest level of d divided by 2, which could also be written as 0.5d. And again, the question says it's going to fall a distance of 0.25d. So if it falls a distance of 0.25d, we would subtract 0.25d from that highest position of 0.5d. We would get, of course, a value of 0.25d. So that is going to be the position of the water in this problem. That's going to be the x of t. So we're going to go to our equation and we're going to sub in the 0.25d for that position. We're going to actually rewrite the d divided by 2 as 0.5d as well. Now, in addition, the period, which is capital T, was stated in the problem to be 12 and a half hours. It's right there. So we're going to sub in 12 and a half for the period represented by capital T. And now the question becomes, how do we solve for lowercase t? That's what we're actually looking for, is the time required for this motion to take place. So to begin solving that, we could actually divide both sides of this equation by 0.5d. Doing so would cancel out the 0.5d on the right-hand side, cancels these d's on the left side, and then, of course, 0.25 divided by 0.5 is 0.5. So we have 0.5 is equal to the cosine of this 2 pi over 12.5 times t. Now, we want to get rid of the cosine on the right-hand side of the equation. So to do that, we would apply the inverse cosine to both sides of this equation. The inverse cos and the cos will cancel each other out. Now turn your calculator on to radian mode and do the inverse cos of 0.5 and you should get approximately 1.047. And then this is equal to 2 pi divided by 12.5t. Now we're getting close to solving for t. We can multiply both sides of this equation by 12.5 over 2 pi. Make sure you do it on both sides. And that's going to be effective because that's going to cancel the 2 pi's on the right side and the 12.5's as well. So now we have solved for lowercase t. We could pick up our calculator and process the left-hand side. And when we do that, we get approximately 2.08. Since the period was measured in hours, this time comes out in hours. And indeed, this is the correct answer to the question.